Now, today we're using shortening. Shortening has a high melting temperature, yeah? So, unless you have super, super hot hands, this shouldn't be an issue for you. But when we move on to doing all butter, and you have really hot hands, you may start to melt butter as you're, as you're working the dough. So you have the option of using like a bench scraper and cutting the fat into the dry ingredients, but for today I think we should all just use our fingers and do the rubbing thing, okay? So I have here pastry flour, sugar, and salt. I didn't sift it, I'm just going to go through it with my hand to make sure there's nothing um, really chunky in there. Um, in the recipe, it calls for zero to one ounces of sugar. I put the full one ounce because we're making sweet pie, you know, like apple pie and things like that. So the sugar is, is fine. If you're making peach or something savory, you may not want to have that in there. And that's why the zero to one is there because it's an optional ingredient. It helps with the coloring, it helps with tenderizing, it helps with flavor. So I, you know, why not, right? So I have the full ounce of sugar. I did not use dry milk solids. I see the point, so I just didn't use you want to do it, you can do it, but awesome. So I skipped that completely. So right now we have salt, we have sugar, we have flour, all right? And I have my shortening right here, all right? Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of throw it in and I'll start breaking it up. Just small little pieces. We're gonna be going for a short flake pie crust today. So a short flake, and we'll get into this during lecture, basically the fat is like hazelnut size. All right, so I'm not going to really try and get them hazelnut yet, so I'm just going to break them up into a little bit smaller than what I have and start tossing them with the flour. We're using Primex, which is over there on the table, all-purpose shortening. Nothing fancy, nothing fancy. Primex. All right. Kind of bust these up. So I'm just going to toss that first, just to coat all the pieces and kind of separate them out. And then I literally just pick the stuff up and start to rub my fingers and my thumbs together. All right. So I'm not really going to end up with round pieces at the end. So it'll be kind of hard to say if they're really hazelnut size or not. But they're like, you know, comparable. All right. Um, if you did the cutting method with a bench scraper, it's a little easier to tell because they don't flatten. But the way I do it, I flatten them. So it is what it is. So I just kind of rub them. I use both hands to get it going quickly shouldn't take very long, but you just really want to combine all the fat and the dry ingredients together. You can do this straight on the table too, but it's just not good. Short plate pie dough is a uh, great all-purpose dough. It's good for the bottom, it's good for the top, either one, all right? So for what we're doing, we're going to be using this for two different types of apple pie, one today, one tomorrow. So, so as you are fiddling around with this stuff, you want to take a look at the fat. You want to see, you're going to notice that everything turns a little more yellow as you do this, just because the fat starts to moisten the flour a little bit. And as I look at this, you're never going to get them all hazelnut size. Some of them are going to be smaller, some of them are going to be a little bit bigger, but you just kind of want to have a good average. So looking at what I have. I have a pretty decent average right now. I've got some small, I've got some a little bit bigger, but overall I'm feeling comfortable that that's worked enough to start adding the wet. So I have my fat mixed into my dry. Now I need my ice water. Now it says in the recipe that you're going to use four ounces. So I didn't measure, I just put ice and water together. All right, from here I'm just going to measure out four ounces. I could just do this volume wise since I have the scale here. Here I'll start adding. I probably will not use all of it, but it's nice to have it measured. That way I know how much I put in. What the common problem is when someone doesn't measure their water and they just start adding is that they're not 100% sure whether it's wet enough or it's not wet enough. Did I add too much? Did I not add enough? And then they ask me. And I say, well, how much have you added so far? And you have no idea because you don't have this to start with to look at. All right? So make sure you measure your water. Because that, especially as you're new to pie dough and making it the first couple times, it's going to help you decide, like, did I just work it too much? Are my hands hot? Did I melt the butter? Or did I add too much water? All right, and that'll help me, to help you. So measure out your water. And then you're just going to add, I'm going to say, about half to start. And the amount of water is always variable. 
because you know temperature outside, moisture levels outside, flower moisture levels, there's all these things that change. So you just sort of have to go by eye. So you start working the dough at first with the water in. Trying not to really smush the fat too much, but just kind of bringing it together. And as you work this, you should be able to tell that it's either going to form a dough or it's not. Now, I'm not there yet, so I have to add a little more water. Some people do it a tablespoon at a time, but I'm like, oh, I don't have time for that. And you can tell, as of right now, I've used about half of my water, a little bit more than half. I'm probably going to use more than that. And there's always a point where I'm doing this, and I'm like, oh, this bowl is annoying, so here I go. I almost always dump it out on the table at some point or another just because it makes life simpler. So looking at this, to me, it's still a little bit dry. This gets a little awkward, just trying to pour it. I got a bowl. It's really weird, but... And the key is to work the dough to make sure the flour is well dispersed, but not overwork it to the point of, like, it looks smooth. If it looks smooth and almost looks like sugar dough or some sort of like cookie dough that you just roll out and cut cookies, you, you've gone too far with the fat. You need to see the chunks a little bit, especially for a short plank dough. So try not to overwork it, but yet you still have to make sure that everything comes together. You'll see that I press it a lot, turn it, and press it. I don't need it, but I kind of use that same basic motion. So looking at this, I think maybe a little bit dry, a little bit more water, just a little, probably going to end up with about an ounce and a half or so left over, and that's perfectly fine, and everyone will be a little bit different. At the end of the day, you want this to be a dough, but not like a sticky, disgusting, like you can't scrape off the table. Yes. That's a really good explanation, I don't really know. Use a bowl scraper or a bench scraper to get everything off the table. Put it together. Once you have the dough made and you feel like it's pretty well mixed and you don't, you're not going to add any more water or anything like that, then you have to portion it. All right. So I usually just kind of squeeze out to a log. All right, and then you're going to do three equal pieces. Ideally, it's eight ounces each because the recipe, if you add it up all the way, it's like exactly 24 ounces. But that's not going to happen. I didn't use all my water. I didn't use the dry milk solid. So I, I'm going to be more like seven and a half. All right, so just, you know, divide it equally into three pieces and go from there. So I'm really bad at this part. So once you have your three pieces that are relatively the same, um, you're just going to kind of roll them out, flatten them out, kind of form them into nice discs. And also take a look. Let's see how I have that split. It's like a little dry spot that just isn't coming together. That's where you can kind of work this just a little bit more because in the roll, that will be a prank that goes right through your pie dough. It'll just be frustrating. So you can kind of give it a little extra love here if you need to before you flatten them out into discs. So once you have three discs, then you wrap them in plastic wrap. I want you guys to just stick a little piece of tape and put your initials or your name, your first name or whatever, on them, onto sheet pans, into our cooler. All right, we'll label the entire sheet pan with all the pertinent information, but as long as you just know which disc is yours, all right, or which three discs are yours. All right, from there, we'll label the whole thing. So three discs. The flatter and rounder they are, the more chance of actually getting flat, round pie dough when you roll it out in half. All right, so don't skimp on this part. Don't cut corners. Make it nice and flat, nice and round. Wrap them, label them, cool it. That, that. And if you look at this real close, like you can see that I still have some fat pieces. So I have a little white spot there, a little white spot there. A little white spot there, there, and that's good because when I roll that, you'll see little smears of white, and that's fat, so that's a good layering, so that'll give flakiness. 